Hello everyone, Nilana here. Today we are going to do a Celestial Tournament instance. For those of you that don't know, the Celestial Tournament is located on the Timeless Isle, right in the middle of everything. You come over here to Master Lee and he will have a weekly daily for you. The Celestial Tournament has a possible th uh, combination of three different tamers. The, the tamers all come in the same set, but there's three different possibilities, uh, and they rotate each week. So, let's get in the instance. Now, the Celestial Tournament does not allow you to use your pet, battle pet heal, this right here. You also cannot revive your dead pet. So it's important to have a good combination. Uh, if you want a really good guide and you haven't started the tournament yet, but you want kind of a good grab bag of pets to have to possibly come in and defeat this tournament, uh, there's an excellent guide on Wowhead. I will put the link to it in the comments. This is where when I first came in here, I had a about 40 level 25 pets and I got my ass handed to me. So I went and did some research and discovered that really there's some specific pets that are extremely useful in this fight, uh, most of which are not exceedingly rare. I now have a few snails that are all leveled up um, because that's a very useful uh, pet for the next stage of this fight. So stage one, uh, in this particular week, we have Taran Zhu, we have Chen Stormstout, and we have Rathion over there. And for Taran Zhu, my pets are the Rapana Welk with Absorb, Shell Shield, and Dive, Ghostly Skull with Shadow Slash, Ghostly Bite, and Unholy Ascension, and Silky Moth. Any moth really will do here. Um, they just need to have the combination Alpha Strike, Cocoon Strike, and Moth Dust. Okay, so I'm going to come out with my Rapana Wilk first, and the first thing I'm going to do is Shell Shield. Now, Yen has a couple of nasty abilities. Uh, comeback is a basic attack. Blackout Kick is highly annoying. All it does is stun for one round. He seems to use it at the worst times, though. <laughs> of course. Uh, and then he has Feign Death, which he will automatically dodge whatever comes at him, and it will swap him out for somebody else. Uh, in this case, when he swaps out the first time, he will automatically do this at half health, which for him is 800 hit points. And he will swap to Bolo. So I'm going to absorb. His blackout kick now is down for five rounds and doesn't affect my snail because of the critter ability. We're immune to it. And now I'm going to dive. And I'm going to absorb. Which will drop him below 800 health. Now as soon as this happens, what's going to happen is on the next round, Yen's going to feign death. So before he does that, I'm going to swap out to my moth. And I'm going to moth dust. Alpha Strike. And Cocoon Strike, which will save me taking any damage this round. Which misses the Blinding Powder.
And now I'm basically just going to hit him as hard as I can, as much as I can, until the moth dies. Now, I used my moth dust and the 25% chance to put the target to sleep worked. So the first thing Taranzu is going to do is swap him out and swap Yen back in. So I'm going to swap my moth out back for my snail. And I'm going to dive. Now Yen's immediately going to feign death again. Now Lee has a very annoying ability, Bandage, and this does an insane amount of healing. So I was expecting him to swap in Bolo. I should have realized he was going to swap in Lee because Lee is the highest health. So after I do a round get the moth dead, then I will bring in my ghostly skull. Now Lee's going to heal after this round is up, so I'm not going to use my really heavy hitting ability. I'm going to use my uh, Shadow Slash. Because now he's going to bandage and be up to full health. The important thing with the skull is to make sure that when he dies, being an undead character, he's going to have that one round of immortality. When he dies, you have to make sure that you get off that unholy ascension. So now I have three rounds to kill Lee. So I'm just going to Shadow Slash until he dies. Uh, I forgot Bolo was still alive. Okay. Well, we can take him out. My snail should be able to successfully take out Yen without too many issues and stay alive. The biggest problem in this fight is Blackout Kick, which is negated against the Welk because it's critter, so it won't work. And Lee's heal uh, is the biggest pain in the butt to get through, so that's why you need the really heavy hitting skull and to take him out. It's important in this fight that your snail stay alive. If you use the snailception um, strategy on the Wowhead guide that I'm going to link, because you need three snails. Now for me, I have three level 25 snails. 
You don't always need the third one, but you want to have it available in case something goes wrong during the fight with Chi Chi. So it's important that you make sure this snail stays alive. So now we're going to move on to Chen Storm Stout. Now of these three, I think Chen is kind of the harder. It's got a little more RNG in it uh, that can cause a problem. I'm going to come over here and find Chen. And let's get this going. So I start this fight with TikTok and I'm going to build my turret. And Metal Fist. A couple times until Tonsa dies. So TikTok is, well, I call him TikTok. This is my clockwork gnome. And he's going to put up another turret, but really what he's going to end up doing is Chirps is going to go first, and she's going to shoot Lullaby. So he's going to soak this sleep buff before I swap out to a different pet. And now I'm going to swap to my idol. up sandstorm once sandstorm is up chirps ability uh, swarm is not gonna do any damage and I'll just crush chirps chirps to death Oh man, missed. So this lasts an extra round. Get Sandstorm back up for the damage negation, which will kill Chirps in the process. And as soon as Burly comes out, the first thing he's going to do is use Inubriate, uh, which is highly annoying, and you really don't want that to take, so I'm going to use Deflection. And then I'm going to Crush. And I'm basically going to switch between Crush and Deflection until my idol dies. And now it's elemental against elemental. I'm gonna geyser and then I'm gonna heal because he's gonna hit me with that really heavy hit. And then I'm gonna jet a few times. Well, that sucked. My guys are missed. That's one of the kind of RNG items that really can be a pain in the butt. Um, I'm going to get first strike here. So my water jet should take him out. So I'm not going to heal. I'm not going to heal. I'm going to instead hit my water jet and cross my fingers. So now Chen Storm Stout is down. And I will go over to my Rathion team. 
For Rathian, I use a Marmot, a Scourged Whelpling, and my Curious Oracle Hatchling. So here with Cindy being an undead, uh, his abilities are, uh, most of his abilities are weak against my little marmot here, puntable. So, but this is strong, so I'm going to chop. If your first or your second chomp misses, it's a really good idea to, because at this point nobody's taking any damage, it's a really good idea to forfeit and start over, because uh, it causes some problems. So at this point now I've got um, Ice Tome, and he's going to use Diseased Bite on me, which is pretty heavy. So I'm going to Burrow, which will avoid the Ice Tome, it avoids the disease, and saves me. So I missed that first burrow, so I'm going to forfeit and start over. Okay, chomp chomp. Let's try that again. Sometimes with these battles, knowing, you know, what increases your odds, what decreases your odds, what's really going to cause you a problem is the biggest part of winning the battle along with just some patience. If at any point you leave this instance, you lose all of your progress. This is not something you can be saved to. Uh, if I were to leave the instance right now, I'd have to go through each of these tamers again. And I'm going to crouch because this is going to reduce all damage taken by 50% for three rounds. So this will help keep my Marmot alive while all of these uh, frostbite charges are hitting him. And I'm going to chomp until Cindy dies. And I'm just going to keep chomping uh, until Alex kills my marmot. Okay, so with my Marmot finally dead, I'm going to bring out my Scourged Whelpling. You'll notice that Alex has one round left on his Ancient Blessing, which is about typical. So I'm going to throw my Call Darkness. That will avoid him being able to have that huge heal. because darkness reduces uh, healing by 50%. And then I'm going to throw Dread for Breath. This is nice because it will also hit the backline pet, and the backline pet is also a dragonkin, uh, so it's strong against him too, and will bring his health down quite a bit before he even comes out of the gate. Dread for Breath is a three-round ability, 
So it's kind of nice because all you got to do is click and forget. So my weapon is going to die here, but then he'll come back for his immortal round. And I'm going to throw darkness here just because it'll hit him hard. Might take him out. Oh, close. And my Whelpling will also eat the Dragonkin ability of an extra 50% damage. And then my Oracle's just going to come up and punch him. Oftentimes, I don't really need my third pet in this fight. Um, I still wouldn't attempt trying to power level using this. This tournament really is about uh, skill and being able to outlast. So I wouldn't try to level anything here. Your third pet for some of these fights is really just that backup of, oh crap, RNG really messed me there. And so now I need my third pet. So the second stage of the tournament are the four celestial minis, is what I call them. Um, they are carbon copies in pet form of the celestials that you fight in the middle of the Timeless Isle. Uh, and you'll see if you look around at the instance, you're actually sitting in the middle of that arena uh, for the instance. So, first person I, the first pet I always go to is Zufu because he tends to be the biggest pain in the butt to get by. Uh, if you're going to have trouble, he's probably who you're going to have it on. And I would rather down him because the rest of them are pretty much guaranteed fights. He was the only one I really, really struggled with when I first started doing the tournament. So for Zufu, I use a steel combination, all three mechanical pets. Zufu is a beast. Uh, the Sun River Micro Sentry, the biggest thing here is that it has to be Call Lightning. And you can use any pet that has Call Lightning uh, if you don't happen to have the Micro Sentry. For a long time, I used the uh, Wild Jade Hatchling, I think, also has the Call Lightning ability. Um, I also use Little Bling for inflation uh, and make it rain. And Dark Moon Tonk, a good substitution here if you don't have the Tonk, is a Menagerie Custodian. Um, and with the Tonk, you use the Missile Shock and Awe Ion Cannon. And let's see if it works again. I've used this strat a couple of times the past few weeks so far. I've yet to have it fail. First thing I'm going to do is throw Call Lightning. And now I'm going to swap to Little Blink. I'm going to use Make It Rain and then Inflation. He has a high speed stat, so that means he's going to take go before Zufu, which is nice. He's going to die and resurrect here, which is another very useful uh, with having mechanics because this guy hits like a truck. And after the first inflation, it's going to do that uh, damage debuff on him too. Now I'm going to bring out my Tonk. I'm going to use my Shock and Awe. And then take him out with Ion Cannon. I will die here, res, and then blast him. Down he goes.
So Zao is actually even easier. Uh, let me find him. I also use the micro sentry here. Now, I use the sentry in both of these. Um, if for something goes wrong with Zufu and he ends up needing to be come out, needs to die, again, you can use any pet with call lightning ability. So here, I'm going to hit Fell Emily because it does a little additional damage. Then I'm going to throw Call Lightning. After this fight, I don't need the Micro Sentry to stay alive, so I take a little more risk with him. I use two ankle renders. You can use any of the Zandalari um, little guys like this, except for, I want to say, the ankle biter. Uh, there's one that does not have this ability, which is Black Claw. You have to have both Black Claw and Hunting Party, uh, and that is the key to this strat. This ankle render is only going to last long enough to probably get one hunting party off. Sometimes he only lasts long enough to get Black Claw off, which is just fine. If you manage to get a hunting party off before he dies, that's awesome. And down he goes. The important thing there is that this fight has to be put him down before that wish goes off that he was using. Um, now, a nice tip here is that you can't use this uh, to revive or heal your pets, but if you find yourself in a position where you have a pet at half health that you want to use, um, I have a team here at the bottom called Healing. And you take no, you get docked nothing for um, forfeiting a fight and starting over. Uh, so many people have figured out that you can, uh, let me move this guy into here and pick this. Here we go. So many people have figured out that you can, with certain fights, use those fights to heal your pets. And I do. That's why I have this little healing group. I have my magical crawdad in here. It can be any pet that does maybe an AOE heal. I use the crawdad because it's fast with Wish. Um, and the two rounds in the Eula fight, I always save Eula for last so that in the event I need to heal my pets, I can use her to do so. So you come out, in my case, I can use two rounds because the first thing she does is throw her Emerald Presence and then she'll lift off at the first, uh, the second round. Uh, so I'm going to throw my Wish. And then I'm going to swap to the pet I want to heal. Bring my Ankle Render in. He's immediately going to be healed to full health as soon as Eula flies up. And the forfeit is immediate. So now my head is my pet is all healed uh, so I always save Eula for last because she has at least two rounds where she does no damage nobody's at stake and you can use them to heal so we'll come over here to that's just a nice little tip we're gonna come over to Chi Gi. And the strat that I use is Snailception. One, because it is so easy. Um, it tends to make the fight a little bit long, but it is almost completely guaranteed. I almost never use the third snail. And it's it, you can get snails anywhere. So there's no issues with, oh, this is a really hard pet to get or anything like that. So it's a very simple strat. All the same abilities, Ooze Touch, Acid Goo, and Dive. Now my little Welk here, I forgot, needs some healing, so let's go fix that. Oh, I forgot to swap my team. I see how easy that is, you just click and go.
Okay, so now my snail's all healed. And swap back over. And let's do this. So you have a couple of priorities when fighting Chi Chi. Um, basically, is your acid goo active? If it is, then uh, is your dive <coughs> up? And if not, ooze touch. Etheril, the very first round, what she's going to do is she's going to blow Tranquility. She's going to use her Fire Quills. Then she's going to use Etheril. Now this is only good for one round. It doesn't matter if she gets hit or not. It goes away after that round. And at that point, after she uses it the first time, she will always use it as soon as it's available. That's important. So the first thing I'm going to do is goo her. Or him. Then I'm going to use my ooze touch because the next thing she's going to do is quills. Sometimes this fight lags. It's kind of weird. It's just this fight. Anyway. The next thing she's going to do is Aetheril. Now at this point is when I'm going to dive because she's going to use her Aetheril. I'm going to dive for my first of a two round ability, which makes her Aetheril basically useless. And I'm going to put my goo back up. And use touch until the goo drops off. So my first snail is dead. She is at 394 hit points. I'm going to bring out my next snail. And I'm going to hit goo. And then her ethereal will be up so I will dive. The reason for the goo constantly being up is with Tranquility up, it's almost impossible to kill her without having something that negates it. This helps negate it, negate it, and it increases the kind of the damage that you do to her. So it basically helps negate completely the healing that she gets from Tranquility. It's important to keep that goo up. I missed a round. I will save my dive, although I'm probably going to die. <laughs> so I bring out my third snail, use my goo, and then I'll dive. And this should kill her. There we go. Alright, so next is Eula. Now, I don't actually use uh, the strategies um, that I found. Um, somebody had mentioned that this pet can be soloed by Bigglesworth. It's true. Completely soloable. Uh, I do have some backline pets just in case, but with the right timing, you can do it with just this pet. Um, it takes a little bit of time, but it's pretty much a guaranteed win. And on the last pet through the whole thing, why wouldn't you take a guaranteed win? So you're going to claw. She's going to put up her Emerald Presence, and then you're going to throw your Ice Tomb. Now 
Now you're going to put up your ice barrier. Now Bigglesworth is 325, so has a higher speed stat and goes first. So at this point, with this up, it will block any two attacks, including your own, so I'm going to pass. Use the stun to claw. Claw again, and I will actually take one hit from her Jade Breath. But then she's going to throw her Presence back up because it's down, so I don't take damage this round. As soon as my Ice Tomb is up, throw it. Then Barrier. Block that, and then pass to block the Jade Breath. Claw, Claw. I'll eat one breath, then she'll put up her Emerald Presence so I don't take any damage the second round. Ice Tomb as soon as it's up, Barrier as soon as it's up, Pass, Rinse, Repeat. And she should die here. And Mr. Bigglesworth is at 407. And now you have won the Celestial Tournament. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I've been waiting for a while to do the Celestial Tournaments. I will do each Tamer set. Um, and again, I will put the link in the description for the uh, Celestial Tournament Guide that I used that gave me a good solid list of pets uh, to fight as well as some really nice strategies um, that made this beatable for me. Uh, thank you very much. If you guys enjoyed this, leave a like and I'll see you next time.